I'm Ryan. And I'm Allie. After falling in love, we decided to ride bikes across America. Collecting love advice along the way. This is Love Cycles. No No flatties, no no whammies, no no crashies. Well, good morning. It's hard to sleep in when there's, you know, tons of people waking up around you at 5 a.m. People here are real excited about riding bikes. Good morning, Allie. Good morning. <laughs> Ready for rag bry? Yeah. All right, so the goal is to have as much fun as possible, to jump and slip and slides, to eat pie, to make new friends, whatever else we, happens, happens. I like our chances. Let's do it. I love this. I am amongst my people, the bicycle people. You might be asking yourselves, what the heck is RAGBRAI? Well, it stands for the Register's Annual Great Bicycle Ride Across Iowa. And it was started in 1973 by some reporters from the Register in Des Moines. And they said, hey, let's ride bikes across Iowa and report about what we see. It became very popular. And now today, there are about 20,000 people every year that do RAGBRAI. It is the largest bike touring event in the world. It is all about fun and camaraderie and pie and pork chops and good times and it's a seven day ride. People ride about 450 miles depending on the route. The route changes every year and boy, is it a good time. Okay, here we go. So Allie, we only have 40 miles to go today to get to the next city, but it'll probably take all day to get there because we're gonna be having a lot of fun. Are you ready for that? Yes, Ryan, I am ready for that. You know what else I'm ready for? I'm ready for pie and slip and slide. She's ready for pie, ladies and gentlemen. Good job, way to go, way to go. Ah, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Have a good day. We just rode the mile of silence, and that is a time when everybody turns off their stereos and ends their conversations to honor the people who have died on bicycles in America in the last year. There were some signs talking about how there have been five Iowans who have died in the last year and they all were kids. The whole idea is to make cyclists and motorists aware of one another so they can share the roads in a peaceful way and uh, it was powerful. In an event like this where it's usually just a crazy loud party it was nice to quiet down for a moment and to think of those who have uh, died on bicycles and how we can prevent it in the future. Thousands and thousands and thousands of bicycles all piled up and you know what? None of them are locked up because Nobody steals here. Iowa is heaven. <laughs> there are no bike thieves in Iowa. Maybe there are, but not at Ragbride. Allie is holding a plate of pancakes. What are you doing? I'm gonna have a bite of this pancake. As some of you may know, I'm gluten free because I'm allergic to wheat. But you know what? Sometimes it's worth it just to eat some gluten and feel sick for a few days or a week. Mmm. Mm, wow, she did oh, it. Oh, well, that's really good. I want another bite. Don't be confused, it's not that I don't love gluten, it's that gluten doesn't love me. Ragbri will be a lot less fun if you're sick, so I hope you don't get sick. <laughs> it's not that, I did, it's not like a sudden sickness. I'm not gonna like start vomiting all over you. Ah. This is the, the fifth year we've been doing this, and we give the seed balls to the riders, and we're asking them to toss them out while they're riding across the state. And while they're doing it, they're helping to restore habitat for the monarch butterfly. And all the extensive use of pesticides and herbicides are wiping out all the milkweed. So the milkweed seed balls um, are helping to restore the habitat. And it is their host plant, the only plant they will lay their eggs on and the only plant that the caterpillar will eat. When the milkweed disappears, the monarch disappears. And in the last 20 years, their population has dropped 90%. 
So we need to do everything we can to restore habitat. It's a mixture of mud, clay, and soil. One third clay, two thirds soil. And you mix it up until you can work with it. And then we insert the seeds in it. Every one of these seed balls is rolled by hand. We started in February and we made 14,000 seed balls and brought them just for Rag Bride. And so we're so happy to be here today to pass them out. I'm going to try not to eat these when I get too hungry because they kind of look like chocolate truffles. Sebastian found this butterfly, it got hit by a car, and he's nourishing it back to health. And he's also been teaching it tricks. Whoa, it can stand upside down. Let's do a high five. You have to be patient and gentle. Look at that. Don't eat them. Don't eat them. We've been biking by corn for what seems like an eternity, and it's just endless sea of corn. And so it seems appropriate that we should finally get to eat some. This is going to be our first bite of corn in corn country, and I'm so excited. It's going to be delicious. Sweet corn, yum. Sea bombs over alley. It's our first water slide of Rag Rai and uh, well, it's time to get wet. Oh yeah, I got the ladder up. Woo! Now I'm slippery. We took out a little kid, but we both survived. <laughs> Here's a little warning to all of you slip and sliders, future slip and sliders. A wet chamois is a sure way to get a saddle sore, <laughs> but I think it's worth it, right? Throw on a little extra squirrel nut butter and you're good to go. You know, we rolled in last night to town and we're pretty much immediately welcomed into a family home, treated like we were like we were family, given a big plate of food, and man, it really set the stage for what this event is. You know, people keep on saying the world would be a better place if life was always like Rag Brian, and I'm starting to see what they mean. There's a sense of community here and generosity and real hometown pride that is just really, really beautiful to be a part of. I've been both surprised and impressed by the diversity of cyclists out here. Young, old, people from all over the world, different ethnicities, and really impressed by how much fun everyone's having. People are out here and they're dressed up in costumes and they're playing music and they are just having a blast. So I've also got to say I'm quite impressed by the drinking power. They start early and they go hard. So I've been told that this is what the real bikers do for hydration is they eat pickles and then they take shots of pickle juice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in survival situations, you have to drink your own urine. That's what I'm doing today. Allie, we made it. Day one. It's been such a fun day, babe. Thanks for rag brying with me. We're walking in the United Methodist Church for spaghetti dinner time. Look, my first piece of pie. This is very exciting stuff right now. I feel very happy to be eating spaghetti. I've been waiting for this all day. Allie has just traded her ripped shirt to this dude, and she got Nine this day. shirt. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Nice. All these nice guys from Austin. Now let's see if that shirt fits you. Nice. And she told me one morning, I'll never forget it, she said, look, as long as you get it from morning and love me, and I know that we're gonna be okay, and she said, that, that takes on a different definition every day, being okay. But as long as I know that we're going to be okay, I will always love you. And I thought, you know what? I can go through anything that comes across my yep. path. 
Right. As long as I know that, that woman's going to love me, regardless of what I'm going through. Yeah. And so 25 years later, we still laugh about that. Matter of fact, <clears throat> my going away date night that we went through is we went on a $10 date. Story behind that is when she was pregnant with my son, our second child, she came out one day and I was working in the garage. She goes, look, we got 10 bucks that I can spare in the checking account. What do you want to do? I'm like, you put it together. Best date we've ever had. <laughs> There you go. So she comes out the night before we're coming up here. She goes, I got 10 bucks. Where do you want to go, baby? I'm like, it's on here. So we went to Valero. We got these nasty, horrible We got a muffin and two Redbox movies and went home and watched them. Our kids are off at camps and doing their thing now. It's absolutely about loving the other person way more than yourself. Enough yeah, to not tear them down. We've known each other for like 26 years. And uh, we've only been married for five. But we, we, we went through everything together and then uh we were just like why the hell are we not married at this point and we're like all right let's do it but and and then it was like everything got tested because from that point forward everything went wrong and uh <laughs> but i mean i had a house go down with a tornado forces into texas hung out in texas for a while and then uh my disorder popped up I and mean, you want a woman that's going to stay with you when you're completely paralyzed in the bed and you can't move for yeah. like two days, yeah. and she's she's yeah. still there, yeah. shit, dude, you're 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 golden, you know. But uh, no, but at this point, you know, there's nothing that can break us apart, and that's just. Isn't that the coolest? Part it's of awesome. It? What, what do you do when it gets hard? Like, what's what's the? Oh, we yell at each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we've yelled at each other many, many times. I mean, you know, yeah. you just uh, think that you get it off your chest and you come back and you say you're sorry. So the whole, the whole reason I think to get married is to have, to have children. Otherwise, why get married? Have a party? Because you love your wife. Have a party. But you could totally agree. There you... So no, that's a big. Question. That's my question to you. Like, do you guys think? Do you guys want kids? I mean, it'd probably be more you than him, maybe, what about but. Walton? Like, is that something? <laughs> hey, you, you've asked us yeah, yeah. to share some really deep feelings. And They're I mean, terrible. if you are taught, we're, we're talking about love and all that stuff, but kids are like a product of a marriage. So. Oh, wow. True. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I have another. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I pose another reason to get married? Because. I'm a minister and I've done several weddings okay. and a big part of it, well, something that I've always made a big part of the ceremony is you gather your friends, your family, your community, yep. and you say, will you support us yeah. in this? Yeah. Like, and you there say, you hey, we're all going to be a couple. We're like, you know, this is it. Like, you know, him and me forever. Like, are you guys in on this? Will you support us when times get rough? We're going to come and complain to you and you're going to be like, stick with it. Like, let's make this happen. I got your back. So I've always seen that as a big part of just making that commitment, like you know, you were saying, knowing that every day, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake up and this woman is beside me, or this man is beside there you me, go. you know, like, right. and she has promised me that. She said those words, like I'm gonna be beside you every day for the rest of your life. And I think for me, that's like a big thing. <laughs> Will you ever consider having a child? Is that in your foreseeable future? Hey, well, her point, that... her point. No. no. But no. no, I just been down there. They're talking about She's bikes and derailers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys That's talking about? about. <laughs> what are you guys doing up here? Well, I really like XTR because you know my daughter just betrothed herself more or less to her fiance, but they don't want to have kids. They've yeah. said this. It can happen. Well, They've I'm said not, this. And she could okay. say that. I'm just saying. So hold say on. That I'm just saying, I'm just saying marriage does not equal having kids. It's, so hold on. I, so, and I think it's legit. But long term vision I, I, might I would, be there. I would, I would not, wish that it were otherwise. Races. I would wish that it were other. I would love to have grandkids. I think they'd have awesome kids. But I just. So let me throw in on that. I'm 47 and have a 21 month old granddaughter, which is. I get told all the time, extremely young. We get that. Um, but I'll say this, that to his point, <clears throat> it it can be a goal or product of a relationship. But my daughter's not married, um, but has done an amazing... I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have written out the script and her performance any better than she has done as a single mom. And this little girl, now she's ours, right? But this little girl is special. And so I think that when you focus on, kind of like what I was talking about a while ago, when you truly choose to overlook the bad stuff and buy in, I mean, really buy in, then you can focus on the good. I mean, you guys ride this daily. If you focus on the negative, you know, the sun's hot, the hill's tall, right. it's going to suck. But, um, 
But as far as children go, it does add another level to it, but it also adds this amazing, amazing horizon landscape that you can't get anywhere else. So I kind of like his question, but I, but but to his point as well, it's it's kind of you know it's in the middle. It's not guaranteed. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. But I guarantee, I'll tell you this: um, that child, I, I I work with kids a lot. I mentor a lot of young boys that don't have dads, um, and specifically in the high school where I live. And the number one common denominator that we face is that they don't have a dad. Um, and so I believe that children are a product of their environment, uh, good and bad. And so. The community, I love what you said, Ali, the community, not only in a marriage, but in our community as it is, in a school, in a church, in a sporting team, whatever, can choose to come together and lift those kids up and, and raise them. Um, because at some point, they're going to become us. You know, they're going to be our next generation. They're going to, they're going to create an influence and determine where we go um, based on how we treat them today. So I love the questions and the two different angles that come from it. So kind of awkward hey you're gonna have kids but <laughs> but at the same time it it is amazing it absolutely it, is so yeah the, the question about kids is an interesting one because your daughter and the father are no longer together and they didn't necessarily plan on being no they did not right mm -hmm. so the kids was a accident <laughs> right she was. right I but, mean, she but was. another way of saying it is that it, they have responded or she, at least, has responded to this situation and, and you know what the crazy has, thing has is? turned out to be a good parent. So the crazy thing is I'd hit a point in my life where I was successful in what I was doing and I had hit a freaking wall. And I will say this on camera, that that <laughs> little girl was probably more for me than her mama. Right. I will admit that. Yeah. Um, awesome. She has been really, really, and, and she's 21 months old. But it's it was a reminder to me of, of how beautiful all the things yeah, we forget. Yeah, that's nice. That's, that, that's honest. kind of I like it. I like it's, that. It's, got, it's all the things that are beautiful that we forget. You know, once your kids start getting older and they start down a path. Hey, Rick, how many kids do you have? I've got three. I've got a 23, a 17, and a 16. And, and I've got awesome kids. I do. I've got awesome kids. We, my wife and I are very blessed. Um, we like to think that we we gave them a place to thrive, do their own thing. But but back to the kid thing. Um, it's it's a result of. Um, you know, we're all athletes. It's a result of what you put into it. It takes just two seconds to care about somebody else more than yourself. Brian, Allie, Brian loving Allie more than <laughs> That's what it takes to get through it, um, especially outside of our immediate relationships. I'm David Walker. I've been, I met my wife at age 15 in high school. Wow. Good stuff. We've been married for 28 years now. My name is Jody Hunt. <laughs> I met my wife Ellen in 1983. Uh, we've been married 32 years. Is there something else? And your favorite color? My favorite color <laughs> is black. Can we just say we were, we were punk rockers? My name is Rick Turnbill. I met Heather in 1991 in a little bitty college in southeast Oklahoma, Connor State College. And uh, we've been married for 25 years, August 7th. Of this year, a few days. With well, Spicoli, what about you? Yeah, my name is Spicoli. Uh, met her in San Diego, and we were, we've been married 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. I'm Glenn Coster. Um, I met my wife in 1991, and uh, we've been married for five years. We've been best friends for a long time. That's cool. First day of Rag Ride 2018 is in the books. It was fun. The weather was perfect. Allie got to see all the fun, goofy magic of the event, the scale of the event, the people. Man, what a good day, huh? What do you think? Oh, it was an awesome day. It's been super fun. Love everybody here. Love the scene, love the fun, love the music. Yeah, it's like to be here. And we got in a slip and slide, which is very important. And I got a new shirt. Let's not forget that. Yeah, the new shirt is awesome. No. Oh. New Orleans. Thanks, Dante. Yeah. And we're sitting here in a field of thousands of people. And I like it. It's a good way to make friends.